Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, this is Marcus Maca Liliador. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody for joining us and welcome here to Muay Thai for Live Stakes, Unite Against Cancer. As we said, inside the ring, Sebastian Del Martinez and Dave Benson calling the action here. And we now welcome in the five-time Swedish Muay Thai champion, Marcus Maka Liljedold. He's also a 2019 WBC Scandinavian champ and a two-time Isma bronze medalist on top of all that. Oh, and by the way, the WKN Nordic champ too. So quite a few credentials here for the Southern Swede as he prepares to enter the Muay Thai for life ring. And he's jumping in there on short notice actually. He is replacing the uh, uh, Argentinian champion, Brian Ayavato, who was very excited about making his debut in Muay Thai for life, but unfortunately had to pull out. But you know, when if one fighter's loss is another's opportunity, and that's exactly what Liliodol got here. A big opportunity to open up the main card here at Muay Thai for Life. Six, Unite Against Cancer. And it almost feels a bit strange that we haven't seen him inside this ring before. It's, I mean, just like on account of those credentials alone. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, this is Anton Pain City Sherkvist. All right, Partile Arena, here we go. The following Muay Thai for Life contest is presented by Design for All and is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the super middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, weighing in at 74.4 kilograms with a record of 12 wins and six losses. Fighting out of Helsingborg, representing Helsingborg Muay Thai, he is the five-time Swedish Muay Thai champion and the 2019 WBC Scandinavian Muay Thai champion. This is Marcus Maka Liliador. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, weighing in at 74.5 kilograms with a record of four wins and three defeats. Fighting out of Stockholm, Sweden, representing Tulinga Muay Thai. He is the two-time Swedish Muay Thai champion. This is Anton Painsidi Scherkvist. Your referee in charge of the action, Eric Diener. All right, here we go. This should be a good one here. Let's so take a look at the tail of the tape. As you can see there, Marcus Liliodolf, nine years older. I'm going to start be slightly taller. And of course, the experience advantage resides with the veteran Liliodolf as well. And this is a very, very interesting matchup because in some ways, Marcus Liliodolf is somebody who Anton Krakis has seen and sort of like, you know, seen in the limelight as he was coming up through the ranks. And he said, leading into this fight, I know Marcus, he's a great guy and five-time Swedish champion, but it's my time now. Pain City will deliver. 
Love that. Love that. I just recently saw Liliodorf uh, fight over in the UK. I'm very impressed with his style. Very relaxed, calculated, precise with his shots. And of course, we saw Payne City himself on the last show. This has a treat written all over it. And an interesting little factoid is that Liliodorf has none other than 2023 world champion Mustafa Abutaka in his corner. Mustafa Abutaka, the last fighter to defeat Anton Kvist in Muay Thai for life. <laughs> so I'm sure a very, very welcome addition to Liliodorf's corner. And I see a lot of new ink on Pain City. Yeah, this should be a lot of fun. Kvist's father got him into Muay Thai at around age 15 because Kvist's grades were slipping. It definitely instilled discipline, but mostly inside the ring. Both fighters feeling out here. And Liliodolf, a great mixed martial artist, but also just a great artist in general. You should see some of his sketches and drawings. They're actually pretty fantastic. Look like a sneaky little elbow then from Herak Fest. Nice leg kick there. And responded to in turn by Maka. Do you know what I mean about his style? I really love his style, Liliodorf. Yeah. Just calculated, precise. Ooh. You can kind of sense the power in every single strike he throws as well. Yeah. Lovely left kick. Kirk, this one high on that. Looks like it mostly hit the guard, though. Oh, leg kick for leg kick there. Oof. Oh, just didn't step in enough on that one. And I feel like Quirkus is at his best when he's sort of really finding combinations with his boxing. Yeah, his hands are tidy. Looks like he wants to step in an elbow though, look. Yeah. Nice little hook low kick combo there from Herkvist. Yeah, it seems like Quirkus has really found his range and rhythm pretty yes. early. Looked like he was thinking about perhaps going for a sweep, catching that kick. Nice shots connected there. Yeah. Stiff one too, wasn't it? Yep. As we hit the main card, you just see the level rise, don't you? Beautiful chess match with Payne here. Oh. Oof. The right elbow from Payne City, narrowly missing oh. the mark. Bit of blood coming from the nose of Lillydorf. That was a fantastic, I think, three-punch combination that he landed. Popped his nose there, look. Ooh. Yeah, nice straight left from Southpaw there from Payne City. Steps into Southpaw again, causing him trouble there doing that, look. Yeah. Lillydorf having to deal with it. And he's getting tagged in the process. Ooh. Spinning attack missed there from Payne City. Yeah. Straight left again on the nose. It's going to be annoying. Lilydorf's got his nose popped, and you've got the blood going down the back of your throat. You're finding it hard to breathe. Yeah. It's tiring, if nothing else. And that can really mess up a lot of stuff, right? I mean, just like footwork alone, because sometimes you want to sort of breathe as you're stepping. That, mess, that gets messed up. So, yeah, it might be a bit of an uphill battle so far for the veteran Lilydorf. So solid his stance is, but because he's so solid with that high guard on one side, looking to do more of a long guard, Kirkvest is reading it and stepping down the, uh, a slight angle and popping the punches down the middle. He's yeah. doing it with great effect. You said yourself at the start, his hands are dangerous. We've already seen it early on. Yeah, absolutely. And that is a credit to a famed Swedish boxing trainer, Dawan Kakaways. 
who uh, coached three times Swedish boxing champion Anton Hellström amongst many, many others. Oof. Nice knee round the back from Lilydorf. And in his story career, Lilydorf has racked up some impressive wins over the likes of Joachim Haig and even Christopher Bayou, who we will see later on tonight. So, you know, he's been in there with so many of the best. Oh, it looked like both fighters connected there. Payne City oh. going back into orthodox. Narrowly missing with that right hand. Yeah, that was very, very close. Lilydorf locking the body strong there. Nice knee. Lilydorf uh, looking good right now in the second round so thus far. Constant forward pressure, isn't it? Yeah. Big kick moving, Payne City there. Eats one back, though. Ooh, nice. Oy. Oh, strong elbow in the clinch there for Payne City. Lilydorf locking him up, but he couldn't get around it, so he came out. Nice knee. Oy, there's the sweep we talked about yeah. earlier. Again, the level's gone up. No missed opportunities. Nice low kick there from Kirkvest. <laughs> Great movement. Again, southpaw to orthodox to southpaw again. Yeah, I'm really liking the stance. Ooh, gives switching. up his back though. Gets need for it. Yeah, I agree. I love the switching stance. I don't like it when it's needless and you're not very good at it. When you see people switching to southpaw and doing nothing with it, it's pointless. But Herkfest is actually switching to southpaw, banging that left, straight left down the middle and finding the mark, then switching back to orthodox. Oof. Oh. Nice step and elbow there from Maka. Nice knee on the way in, oh. but he gets tripped for his troubles. And he almost scored a significant strike on one of the judges <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, that one two from Anton Krakvist, that's like, you know, watching Michelangelo paint the Sistine Chapel, but with boxing gloves. Yeah, it's beautiful, it's clean, isn't it? Finds the mark nicely. That's what I love seeing as well, is it, it doesn't have to be complicated, it just has to be good. Yeah, well, I mean, you can never have fundamentals that are too good, right? I mean, exactly. that it truly is a foundation of any fighter. How good are your fundamentals? Everybody loves flashy techniques and spinning attacks and stuff like that. But what good are they if you're getting a hit for a simple one-two on your way in? Exactly that. These girls coming up later, that's going to be a great one. Yeah, a real test for Vilda Ekholm. Is she ready for the next level? I was in Thailand with her coach about 15 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll, I'll be excited to uh, see his work in action. Third and final round now. And it could very well be one round apiece. It's hard to say, but... Regardless, both fighters giving it their all. That's better. Blue locking his man down. Just missed with that elbow. Oh. Oh. One, two. Oy. And it wasn't in his, in his dominant win over Emil Friesland that Perkvist really showcased how good his boxing had gotten. And he's been keeping it up since then. 
Nice one, two from Lilliedorf there. Yeah. Almost a Superman elbow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> kind of gone tit for tat with the jumping techniques. They all seem to connect nicely there. Yeah. Little trip of his own, and you saw him think about the kick, and he didn't let it go. That off balance and then scoring on them is a, a, a good one. Just missed that opportunity a little bit, Lilidorf, as he eats some leather again. Oi. I mean, the boxing from Farkas is really, really strong, but the pressure from Lilidorf is something else. Yeah. I mean, he's stalking forward like Michael Myers Oi. right now. to the body with the teep as well I gotta say Aquarius looks a bit more fatigued that constant pressure is not going to be fun a great combination from Herkfest there just as we said it nice right hand there for Aquarius Lilliardorf's like the Terminator, he just <laughs> walks at you <laughs> the entire time. Oui. I agree, and you know, regardless of how this ends, I know that Lilliardorf will be back. Yeah, great fighter to watch, I love his style. These two very evenly matched as well, it's nice to see. Yeah, so as far as replacement Kick. fights there go, you, go. you couldn't get better than this. Very much. That was nice, that little turn and then kick to finish from Lilliedorf. Wow, that was a great way to start things off here. What a fight. I mean, both of these fighters are just very entertaining and effective styles. And you can see, you can notice that veteran savvy with Billy Dolph. And all the same, you can see that rising star potential with Kratkis, so. That's what's lovely about these sort of matchups, putting those two sort of styles together gives us all the treat. Yep. Scores are being collected here ringside. Let's see some of these replays. Oof. That one too, I mean, okay. my goodness. There, that just sweeping the kick out the way and throwing that down the pipe. There it is again. Finding the mark, but little off walking through it. Lands a knee, but then walks onto an elbow. Very, very one tip for tap, wasn't it? One for one. It's going to be interesting how the judges saw that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we are quite blessed in that we don't have to officially mm -hmm. score anything right now. Just sort of watch and enjoy and call it as we see it. But yeah, close fight. I, I could understand the case for both fighters, to be honest. Yeah, some lovely forward pressure there from Lilliadorf. Some precisely landed techniques from Herkvist. Looks like we're almost ready to go to Chad Fishbourne for the official results. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of Muay Thai for life action, we go to the judges' scorecards. But before we do, round of applause for these Muay Thai for life warriors. <laughs> the judges' scores are as follows. 30-27, 29-28, and 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision, fighting out of the red corner, Anton Payne City Sherkfest. Well, there you have it. Over to my colleague for an up close and personal.
All right, Anton, it's almost Halloween, and that boxing of yours is scary good. What a performance, what a fight. How do you feel after three hard-fought rounds? Uh, very fucking tired. <laughs> it was a hard, hard fight. He's a good pressing opponent, so uh, I didn't really uh, do what I needed to get that right in the fight. But we got the victory, worked on counters as best as I could with boxing, and it worked. Well, it definitely worked. And you just defeated a five-time Swedish champion, and he wasn't even the original opponent for you. How big of a change-up was that for you? You were supposed to face, uh, face uh, Brian Ayavato. Now it was Marcus Lilidov. How much did that affect your training? Uh, not so much. The, the really biggest thing about them is uh, Brian is shorter, Marcus is taller. So that was the only thing. Just worked against taller these last uh, two weeks. But it, uh, it worked. It worked well, but I mean, he can take a punch, right? You hit him with some fantastic strikes. He kept moving forward. What was going through your mind when you were just piecing him up and he doesn't seem to care? Like, fuck, is this Nate Diaz or what? <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, he was a hard zombie. I hit him with everything I got, but it didn't go down. So all respect to him. I will respect him and respect you as well. You always deliver every time you step in here. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for your winner, Anton Bate City, Kirkvist.